So we're back at the shop. I'm gonna do something totally batshit crazy, and uh, it's probably this is probably as dangerous as running the chainsaw itself. Um, is cleaning the jug out, all the aluminum transfer of some dumbass straight gasket or not. Uh, I already did to my 357, the project that I'm working on right now. Um, and just totally just out of my mind, just forgot about it, recording it. So, um, this is another jug I have laying around. It's a 044 jug with, uh, I think the 10 millimeter crank on it, or for the 10 millimeter crank. Um, yeah, it's a OEM jug, so I just kept it. I've had it for a couple of years, and you know, this is why you keep. Sometimes it's good to keep you shit. Now, the object of this is we want to take and remove all of the acid or all of the uh, aluminum that's on the surface of the chrome plating. We don't want to take any of the chrome off, just the uh, chrome plating off. We just want to get rid of the aluminum that's that's been squeaked on there by the this good old guy that's been transferred over. Um, and uh, restore it to new. Um, only the, the only thing that I would say um, you gotta be mindful that might screw the uh, wrench when it works. Is go in there and look and see if it has a, a like a complete scrape through the plating. If it has a scrape through the, pla through the plating above the exhaust port, don't even bother using the and throw it away. If it has a scrape below the exhaust port, I would say uh, throw a cheaper piston in it. Don't throw like something like a meteor piston or something like that. Just chuck it. Uh, chuck a, a more expensive Chinese one like a highway in there. Anywho. Um, Yep, so I got my uh, old ass car battery here that has acid in it. Uh, in um, the periodic table of uh, redneckism, redneck uh, this is more like uh, the the cousin that nice cousin that usually just steals your shit and your mom tells you never let, leave him alone and don't let him in your uh, her room. This is uh, that kind of acid, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like the, drunk, the crazy drunk uncle uh, uncle that shows up at Christmas every year, uh, but it's still not healthy. So at least bare minimum wear gloves, eye protection. I highly recommend. Um, and uh, yeah, go for it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat the shit out of the cylinder. Because I want to get nice and hot. And then, one thing you really want to do is have your he head out of the plume. Do not breathe any of the fumes because this shit is. You're releasing uh, some freaking uh, serious, not noxious fumes. Excuse me, I'm. As I walk away from it, um, I was actually opening my other door for my shop uh, so that. I don't have to pee the fumes. So, another thing is, have a shit ton of Q-tips and a shit ton of rags for this. And you have a ready source of water ready to go because what we're going to do, I'll tell you the whole process right now. I'm going to heat it up, until it's good hot, take a Q-tip, dip it in the battery with the acid, you know, the really minimal acid. And I try to start as far forward as possible, far up in the cylinder as possible, and then work my way back. We're probably gonna have to repeat this three or four times, so I'm gonna show you the first uh, first time completely, and now I'm gonna start skipping through it, uh, editing it out a little more, so that you guys don't have to sit here and watch me do the same damn thing over and over and over again. So, let's roll. <laughs>
And do yourself a favor, don't you only use one side of the Q-tip. Excuse me, I need to steal this light because I'd rather see than you can see right now. And that cylinder was not even hot enough. So you can reheat it after acid's been applied. Just keep your head out of the pan. That's more better. So, a little acid, a little stupidity. Let's see what we got here. So. That's what's left of the caramelized Q-tip. What's your other one? Not not using the button of the Q-tip, just using one side. Again. I figure it's getting hot. No. Hot enough where I can. Try to not get too close to the ports. Because that's the danger zone. Alright, I'm going to go hose this off. Probably burn the shit out of my hand. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so there you can see it looks a little uh, uh, aluminum transfers a little more exposed. Looks like now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit with some sandpaper and rough it up and uh, uh, rough it up to rough up the aluminum transfer some more and then redo the uh, reheat the cylinder. And try it again. I'll check back in about 10 minutes, my time. But so like, okay. I hope you can see the the transfer. Let's see if I can do a dimmer light. See if that helps. Um, you can see there's one score mark that's right there. It goes straight forward. Um, and. I'm almost concerned about it, but I, it's not picking up my fingernail as I drag it over. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. What I'm going to do is that whole acid treatment that you just saw again, but I'm going to concentrate where the aluminum is that I could see now. Um, as you can tell, it's starting to, the amount of aluminum is starting to just sh uh, decrease a whole lot. I think it decreased probably about a good two thirds from the last time to mount the surface area. So I'm going to hit it again. So uh, stand by. I did forget to mention that uh, the second time is a pain in the ass because you gotta burn all the water off of the the jug. So, we my studio lighting here.
So I'm gonna do that for a bit. I'll come back to you with that before I clean up the I sand the jug. Okay, so this is after the sanding on the second treatment. About to heat the cylinder back up and apply more acid. So see you on the other side. Now I'm gonna uh, come back after I've uh, uh, washed it out, uh, crunched it, or cooled it down, washed it out. Not quenching. That's bad. So this is after the third acid treatment and the third sanding. You can see it's decreased some more. Um, now he's got that one vein of uh, uh, aluminum left. Uh, you got to kind of think this as you're washing dishes. Sometimes you got to let it soak a little more. Scrub a little bit, let it soak back and forth, back and forth until you get start getting clean. Um, the slower you do this process, the better. Um, Best way I've learned to tell when it's the cylinder's hot enough is when the the water evaporates off it from the last wash. Um, this would probably take me about three or four more cycles, or actually two to three more cycles of acid. Blah blah blah. I'm gonna go ahead and do it, and then I'll report to you guys. I'll show you the cylinder afterwards. So stand by. So I'm done. Uh, uh, so after the camera shut off, I did uh, uh, one more hot swap pass where we heated up, let the acid uh, evaporate off it, and washed it off. And then I came back in here, I heated up the cylinder again. I did, I heated, didn't heat the cylinder up too much, just enough to almost evaporate the water, and applied the acid. And I found out that if the acid hat is is hot enough just before it vapor, it, you know, starts it vaporizes. It, when it touches the metal and sizzles a little bit, that's the, when you get the best results. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's whew, it's hot. Uh, it's damn near perfect. There's a couple of lines down there. Or a couple, I think they're just little like uh, scratches on the plane, not going through the plane, just scratches on the surface of it. So I'm not too, not I'm not too um, worried about that. One thing you should do when you're sanding it, I'm using 100 grit sandpaper by the way, uh, really coarse shit. So you get grab onto that aluminum. Is uh, don't go up and down with the board. Go around the side of the board because what you want to do with the those uh, scratches you're creating into the plating and removing the. Uh, Removing the glaze off the bore is you're actually creating uh, places for the oil to get trapped in when you put a new ring in there, and uh, it'll actually help the motor last longer and help the ring break in, yada yada yada. So uh, yeah, there you go. I have probably just under an hour into this, and uh, this is what I got. And I'd run a cylinder as is, and I know I'm not doing a trickery. It's the same, same damn cylinder. All I've done is, after I was happy with it, I took it back out to, uh, um, I cooled it down, then I took my sandpaper, sanded it, broke the glaze on the whole bore. Damn barking spiders. And, Just broke the glaze on the board, then brought it back out, hosed it off, and then I brought it back in here and heated it up to knock off uh, uh, any of the moisture that's in the board, so that it would not cause a, you know, cause any corrosion in the board. Because I now cylinders like a freaking a two hundred dollar cylinder or jug right now. And it can save me a whole lot of money uh, next time I have an 044 roll into the shop. So uh, yeah, there you go. Um, did the same thing on my uh, 357 saw that I'm currently working on. So yeah, so see you guys on the other side.